<laughs> All righty. Welcome everyone back to another episode of Energy Unleashed. I'm Suzanne Worthley with my co-host, Kim Hess. Hello, Kim. Well, hello, Suzanne. <laughs> How are you hanging in there these days? You know, it's it's challenging, but I'm I'm doing pretty good. Yeah, we've been we've been separated, <laughs> separated at birth. We've been separated. I've been up north for quite some time. I just was telling her before we hit record that um, yeah, the top half of me is hot, the bottom half of me is frozen in this cabin at this time of year because <laughs> it's just that, you know, it's that thing. So yeah. I, you know, I really respect the people from the days that lived like this all the time and hoofed the water and hoofed the wood and hoofed everything. I mean, gosh, we're so spoiled when we just hit. You know, and, and we're pissy and moany when XL goes out for an hour. You know, it's just crazy. <laughs> it is. We are very, very fortunate that we can push a button and heat just shows up. Right. <laughs> so nice. But it so, has been gloomy. I'm sure people are impacted by the amount of yeah, gloom. I was going to say, so is it gloomy down there? It is also. Yeah. Yes. And it's been yeah. windy and gloomy and chilly. And yeah. It's going to be, I think, a really, this is a tough month in terms of energy, in my opinion. A lot of people, some people, you know, you can go on the internet and get all kinds of views from um, anybody and everything. But I believe that November is always rocky. November is always all over the place. And yeah. this is not to mention, you know, coming into the holiday period, et cetera, et cetera. So what I wanted to throw out today for everyone is the client common denominator that I see a lot right now is the stress of what's going on, you know, what's going on as far as our programming, what's happening in our world, what's happening in our lives. And then God forbid, we as humans are going into this crazy holiday season where our materialism gets kicked into play, you know, I mean, I'm thinking, oh my goodness, next week is already, no, next week after next week is yeah. already Thanksgiving, which makes me laugh all the time because I almost equate it to the Black Friday madness all the time. You know, I mean, it's like, overconsumption already, you know, and mm -hmm. it's, it's just that stressful time of year. So I oftentimes find myself encouraging my client base and more so myself to stay in what we would call the observer mode and the neutral mode. And that's what I want to talk about today, because it's a hard thing to even understand, much less to reroute your brain pattern to make it a normal thing. So basically, you know, let's start out with, well, what is that neutral and observer? And is neutral different than observer? Actually, there's an interesting concept. What do you think? I, I think there is because I, I think observing is one thing, but staying neutral takes a different type of energy to mm -hmm. um, be in that mode. It, it's interesting because I can sit back and watch. But if there's a trigger in there somewhere, oh. you know, mm -hmm. I have to work through that trigger to keep in the neutral. Right. So let's start with observer, because I think then we can go right into, because again, like you said, observer is kind of the mechanics is sort of the way that I'm positioning myself and, and working through my matrix. And then the other one can get deeper into triggers. So when we're talking about actually the observer, oftentimes for me, I feel like it reminds me of when I watch my life, like a movie. Yeah. And I do this often. I know mm -hmm. I'm kind of an oddball. I've told people this before online, but mostly to family and friends that I often, I watch my life and I practice different things. I practice, my kids have gone now. I practice, I have grandchildren or don't. I practice so-and-so's gone or dead or gone from planet now. And I practice all of these weird things from an observer standpoint. And I do that on purpose because I want my body to de-escalate when something happens. I don't want it to, <gasps> because I think our body and our brain, the more that we practice things, it de-escalates the trigger reaction to it. And I know that might sound really weird for somebody. And again, if it doesn't resonate for you, great, but it's what I do in terms of watching. So for me to be an observer is actually quite normal, I guess, mm -hmm. if we want to even use that word, <laughs> <laughs> right? So how much do you think that you observe? Well, you know, it's funny. I was thinking about um, when you were talking about observing, <clears throat> I become at Thanksgiving once dinner served an observer. Yeah. Because we have so many people over and everybody's talking and all the things are happening. And I'm in this place of like, just calm dinner's done. Let me observe what's going on. I don't have to be the center of attention, but right. I'm really like happy to hear what people have to say and what they're up to and all the things, you know? So it, it's, it is like watching a movie. 
Mm -hmm. you know, but I sit back with my glass of wine and just, just observe because yeah. it, it's so busy and the energy is so big and in, in our little house, like it, it's crazy. <laughs> it is so crazy. So, yeah. Well, and, and I think it is, um, you can pull out of the drama. You can pull out of the, the escalated conversation. You can pull out of the judgment. You can pull out of everything when you're in the observer, yes. you can just kind of watch it. Like you said, you're, you're coming to a different place in time and space and your hologram is actually what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you're observing outside of the timeline. You're just watching the timeline create itself, but you're not like in it, helping create it. Right. And it's similar to watching sense. the news, I think, in that you're, you're given this information or you're watching this information. Are you like trying to jump into that or are you sitting back and just being aware of what it is and, and then thinking about what you prefer it to be, you know what I mean? It's, it's. When we find that. observer for things like the news or even family drama, or even just watching period. So what we're saying is practice the observer with things like family functions, practice mm -hmm. the observer in any way that you choose to in that your life is basically a movie. And what it does is it brings you to a different time space continuum. So now when I go and I look at the news and I see all of the horrendous things, I'm not jumping into a timeline that doesn't exist mm -hmm. because if I jump into the timeline of, oh my God, this is going to happen, blah, blah, blah. I'm already down here in a creating another timeline of a creational reality that doesn't necessarily even exist yet. But Does you're that... creating it. So it will exist. Yes. And if I'm That's... creating it, you're creating it and everybody creates it. This is how we're driving the timeline of the negative agenda because everyone that's the negative agenda controller program mm -hmm. They can't get to people that are an observer and neutral because there isn't something to push. There's not the, the energetic agenda is not there to push. So they're, instead of um, jumping into the fear of what's happening and, you know, that, that uh, energetic fear is so powerful. I mean, it um, impacts what you're saying is kind of our consciousness of one. So if you're staying the observer and neutral, you're you're impacting the consciousness of one in a whole different way a more positive yeah light way yeah and yeah. you're not so let's go back to the negative agenda if the negative agenda is pushing this is so horrible you're gonna be you know so fear-filled this might happen to you in six months the whole world might be done blah 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 if you stay in that you are really going into the process of creating that timeline and that's what they want mm -hmm. so you got to pull out of that timeline thought process by putting into the paradigm what I do want. And this is when that personal responsibility comes to a collective one. I am feeling very emotionally drawn into this. I'm feeling sucked in. It's a feel. I'm mm -hmm. feeling sucked in. And then my brain starts to go. So these are all feel centers that we want to be aware of and activated in our body so that we're intimately connected to, uh-oh, I feel like I'm getting in sucked into this. This is now I'm going to find triggers in my own life. I'm going to hurt my own life. I am, you know, I'm being able to be controlled. Therefore, I'm creating the timeline on and on and on and go. So the level of holding the observer is when you're outside of that thing, just watching it as a potentiality. Mm -hmm. And then that technology has no power. That AI, that negative agenda has no power because when we're outside of it, whatever is going on in that so-called timeline doesn't any longer have power over me. It's not pushing my directive. It's not pushing my narrative. It's not pushing my individual one that then goes into the collective one. Because if you take it on and then what, what you're saying makes a lot of um, sense to me, but when you take on that agenda, you're, you're putting it out there again in words and feelings yes. and all of the things in your own life. You become a player in the movie. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, like from, free guy. You go yeah. from the audience, you go from the audience to the non, you know, the non-character player, NCP. You go yeah. from that non-playing character to a playing character now. And okay. you're creating a timeline. Okay. So it's really important for us. This is the hardest thing that people don't get that I think I want to say though. And I really hope people hear this. Understanding that neutrality or observer point or zero point or all these, you know, kind of um different words that we can cross over with. It does not mean that you don't care. 
see, this is the problem. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to watch the news. I'm not going to get sucked into that. Oh my God, you don't care that we're going to war, you know? And it's just, it is such a confusion for people that don't understand how the energy works. And it doesn't mean that you don't care, but yet other people will not understand this until they are understanding the mechanics of creational energy. And I've been accused, we know I've been accused of this forever. You have no compassion <laughs> as you laugh. You have no compassion. You don't care. You don't, you don't care what the world looks like. And yeah. it's like, no, no, no. This is understanding, having wisdom inside of ourselves on how the energy works. Mm -hmm. I actually care so much that I am stepping out of creating a timeline that's imposed upon us. Right. Right. So when you're, okay. When you're doing this, when you're the observer, like the news, the media is a big one, a huge, because I think that's where, uh, depending on what you watch and I'm watching, it's like, wow, you, you're watching this type of media, you're watching this type of media and social media, all the things because of what their viewpoints are, um, especially around the, you know, the war that's going on across the world. Um, when you're, when you're taking that in and, um, perpetuating it forward, um, how do you like, how do you like now step back from that? Like the, the media thing, you need to be aware, mm -hmm. I think of the information and you need to try and look at different vehicles to figure out, you know, kind of what's going on. It's kind of like the rabbit hole scenario that we've talked about before, yep. but it doesn't mean you take it in yourself and you make it yours is what right. you're trying to say. Okay. All right. Well, well, not even make it yours. You're making it, you, you're not even aware you're making it yours when you're being drawn into the movie because you're creating the timeline. People don't understand that we create time. Yeah. And we create timelines and trajectories. People are really unaware of the fact that when I consent or I put my energy into that and I agree with it and or I'm aware of it and I ignore it, both of those things are creating that timeline and moving it forward. So when we are in the zero point, the controller has no power over my thought or my emotional state. I'm just open. I'm just, I'm just observing. And this goes so far in so many different areas. You know, I've done lots of past life people where I say, do not take that information from the past life. Read it like a PDF file. This is the yeah. same thing as, as the observer. Read it like a PDF file, because if our mental and emotional and thoughts and triggers come into everything, it is really, really easy to be more manipulated. If I'm completely neutral and zeroed out on all of that, I'm not going to get manipulated. Okay. So I'm not going to fall for that again or feel that again. So there's two things happening here. We want to keep our vehicle so clean of all the old triggers and all the old memories and all the old thought process by putting it to the Akash, which we've talked about a million times. But also I want to do my best to stay in that neutral zone because this is when I start to be able to have what we would call compassionate witnessing. I can have compassion by witnessing this. I can find compassion for those people that are being, you know, horrifically treated or abused or killed. And I can find compassion by witnessing it, which is way more honoring their path and their soul and their everything. And then I'm bringing that compassion back to source energy. So, but if I'm all caught up in it, then I'm angry. Then I'm using different fuel. I'm not keeping a, you know, a distance to the compassion. I'm not, I am just completely energetically imbalanced when I'm doing it that way. So compassionate witnessing is something that people don't really even understand either because what does that mean? Well, that means that I do have empathy. I do have compassion. I do have feels, mm -hmm. but I'm witnessing it. I'm not stealing it again, empathically taking it on and making it mine. And I think what's interesting, what you were just talking about is that um, sometimes we don't know our triggers. Oh my gosh. Pay attention to what our triggers are, right? So like for my parents right now, I think the trigger for them is understanding that their parents were in wartime and, and we have been in wartime too along the way. But mm -hmm. when you think about World War II, and how, what happened after World War II, the history of that, they feel that so much more than what I would feel that. And it's a trigger for them. Yeah. Like we're immediately, oh my gosh, we need to hunker down and we need to figure out because this is coming our way kind of, you know, thought. And um, so it's, it's, I think really understanding what your triggers are and- But where does the trigger and, come from? Where does the trigger come from? Yeah. The belief. Right. 
the belief. And so the the work is shed what you've been taught that no longer serves you, right? I mean, that's it. So my work is to, so how do we observe, discern, accept? It really comes through meditative practices. And again, this doesn't mean that I'm going to go mm, 20 minutes every day from, you know, blah, blah. It is just developing the observer point as a critical skill. And I do, like I said, I do this a lot because what it does ultimately is it disciplines your ego mind. Okay. Mm. It is so hard. I was sitting up here, you know, I do my quiet time in the morning or whatever. And I was asking for help on, I just, and I've been doing this quite consistently lately, just help me identify ego mind, help me identify and work with ego mind, because the ego is so difficult when we are in this neutral or observer, we are non judgmental. Mm -hmm. And ego mind is so judgmental. Mm -hmm. So, you know, our unruly mind, our undisciplined mind, we can't get to a higher sensory perception. We can't get to our higher self. Um, so when I watch my world and practice my world differently, I become more self-aware and more present. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes they will call this mindfulness, right? And so this is discerning between what is my mind doing? And we talked about this in another podcast recently, what's my mind doing versus my brain? I think it was the chakra one on the third mm -hmm. eye. We talked a lot about that. And this is a thing that we get to in both our mind and our brain. Literally, we call them our actual physical body, but our mind, we get the still point in within the mind or the zero point. Now, that doesn't mean that it's absolutely quiet and nothing filters through because that's almost impossible. But this is a meditative skill where our consciousness connects to the parts of our mind that form our thoughts, mm -hmm. form our emotions and our experiences that drive us through our life. So we want to be in charge of all of those things that I'm moving through life this way, this way, and this way, because my mind's thinking like this. So I want to go, oh, I'm moving through calmly and ease and grace, or, oh, I'm struggling. And this is really awful. I want to get in there. So therein lies the top part of digging into the belief, right? Are yep. we following this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So to begin the process, one must observe the functions of their actual mind. And this is hard because we <laughs> run through our day and we don't even think of our mind. Yeah. I was just thinking about when you're going through this, I'm like, holy, you know, based on past experience, um, and all the things like think about the holidays, past experience, what's expected, what I yep. expect of myself. I'm already up here running oh my God. with the holidays, doing all the things over here yep. and not even in the moment yep. enjoying, you know, as, as we go along, I've done this for years in, in my yep. job, based on this experience in my job, I need to be already in the forefront of this way down here, making sure it doesn't happen. You know, and I was half awake the other night thinking, okay, am I going to do the China this year or am I going to use paper plates this year? You know, and I'm like, what are you doing? This is two weeks out, you know? I mean, why are you doing that? So I don't know. I already bought my napkins. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, maybe you want to do some walking and waking meditation. <laughs> maybe you want to become the observer just for the day. To remain in the observer point is really, really hard because this is what happens. I'm in the observer point, I'm mellow, and then my brain will monkey mind off to, I got to get the napkins, you know? I mean, that's yep. what happens. So this is a skill set. Observer point and neutral is a skill set, and it is not an easy one. This is a massive leap to connect to your higher consciousness awareness and, and, and connect it with your sentient form the feeling body to connect it with the feeling body. My brain is often running. What does my body feel like? Oh, there's hesitation or there's um, angst or there's irritation or, you know, so it's really understanding that these have to connect. These have to connect here. Yes. You know, yeah. and everybody always talks about the heart, the heart, the heart. That's really all it's all about, but God, that's hard. It's so hard because you're, you're working through all of your other chakras and yep. all of the other stuff you have in those chakras, you know? Yep. And, and so to have that trigger show up, it's like, wait a minute, why am I reacting so emotionally to this right now? Right. And the, the monkey mind of what is that all about? It's, it's I, really tough to take that step back and say, okay, that was a trigger. What and I think about? the conversely on the other side of the, the coin here, I think it's really important for us to acknowledge the steps we've made forward in observing so that we're filling our container on both sides again, meaning 
I've really made progress here. I've really, really done well here. I And I was doing that this weekend because the whole family was up at the cabin trying to shut it down for winter. I mean, we still come up, but basically everything's shut down for winter. Yeah, right. You know, trees are cut, wood is stocked, this is put away, that's wrap, blah, blah. And it, it's a stressful thing. And you've got a ton of people in the cabin and you got dogs and you got kids and it's just, it's crazy. Everyone's tired, mm -hmm. you know, and I was observing how I was doing things a little bit differently this year. And I was giving myself some credit to say, wow, you did that differently. You really flew through that without judgment. You really <laughs> are doing better here without, you know, triggering. And then I would still find my onesie twosie triggers and go, why can you do so great with 80% of this and this other goddamn 20% is still kicking your butt, you know? Yeah. So these are things where we need to understand this is a training or a retraining, I should say, of the mind to learn to observe without judgment. This is hard. It isn't easy. So giving yourself some credit, I think, um, is is part of the the process, if we want to say it that way. Yeah. And to also right? realize that triggers are also, for me, I noticed when I was home with my family recently that others' responses quick reactionary responses triggered certain <laughs> behaviors in me. Yeah. It's like, wow, I didn't realize. Yep. Like my dad reacted to something and we're sitting at the dinner table and I seriously put my head down and started just shoveling food in. <laughs> you didn't have to engage. <laughs> I didn't I didn't want to engage. Don't look. Just don't, you know, and plus it was emotional eating. I'm like, holy buckets. That was crazy. Well, without the eating, I'm going to give you some credit here without the eating, because that is an emotional eating reaction, which is a whole nother part, part of this. But the non-engaging is awesome. Maybe just close your eyes next time, because oftentimes we are taking so much in in our brain that with our eye factor, and we brought this a little bit in the third eye chakra uh, podcast, but the eye factor in and of itself creates this feeling that this is real, which indeed it is, but it isn't. That's that hard thing. So if I close my eyes, even if I close my eyes to the craziness just for a moment and I get back into my container and I'm going from a different perspective of feel and sentience and neutral, I can go to neutral or zero point through the darkness of my eyes a little bit better. And I can set aside what I'm feeling or experiencing just by shutting that down. The cool part of it too, was that my dad realized that I was reacting to him and I looked, I finally looked at him and he looked at me and I just started laughing. I'm like, I dad. And he goes, I know I just watched you and I feel what I just did. I, I can't believe it. Like that's it's huge. Like old stuff. So it was really cool that we both realized as we're sitting there and then we can and actually talk about it. Had our, the courage to talk it through, which we is so through cool. it. Yeah. Yeah. So I think one of the gifts of neutrality and observer is to actually unconditionally accept others at where they're at. And we are not a great species for doing that particular thing. We are constantly accepting people for where we want them to be. Yeah. Right. <laughs> where we want them to be versus where they're at. Right. Yes. And so this is why the empath gets involved and we start to transfer energy, et cetera. So to accept other people as they're presenting themselves, and this is different too. I want you to really hear that word. Accept that person as they're presenting themselves, regardless about how you feel about how I think they should present themselves. Because yes. even presenting ourselves is different than who we even may be. And this is important because I might be like completely overstressed and I might be the one in the family that's just got a whole lot of shit going on and I just can't deal and I'm reacting differently and presenting different than who I even authentically and truly am. So it's important for a sibling, a partner, a child, a friend to go, oh shit, she's really got a lot on her shoulders. She's presenting this way and really even pull judgment back in that regard and stay neutral because we can in neutral know this too shall pass hopefully for that person, right? Yep. And they will be presenting differently, most likely in the near future or not. You know, these are things that are really, they sound insignificant, but they're not. They're That's not. it. Because think about different friend groups, family members, like I think through life, we all presented differently for different people at different times in your yeah. job. 
you know, do we really know who our coworker is, you know, how they're presenting themselves at work versus what they are at home? Well, and then add in the second layer, Kim, of the preconceived notion of how it should be expected. So let's go to that work situation. What should we act like in a social interaction at our work versus at our home? You know, so these are another layer that we can find ourselves working in to really have healthy boundaries, have Mm -hmm. healthy boundaries in terms of I'm just not going to play there. That's just not something I do. And and really have way more um, patience, I think, when we're up against those kinds of things. Because social interactions and um, the the kind of like the beliefs of what we should or shouldn't be doing can really kill us. And that's hard, you know? It's a lot to carry around and, and it's acting. Yeah. How, do you, how do you stay in that? It's kind of like lying. Like, how do you keep a lie going? Well, and when we're neutral, it's not your truth. Right. And when we're neutral, we're actually free. So that is bondage and enslavement. And when you're neutral, you're actually free. So we can, when we're neutral, it's amazing also because we can find so much clarity. For example, if I'm the one that's having so much trouble and everyone knows I'm so-called lying and I'm presenting myself inauthentically, if I, if I go into that, then that only exacerbates that whole thing. But if I stay neutral, I'm free to find clarity. I am free to find clarity and insight into what is happening for that person. Whereas Mm -hmm. I don't have that ability to find clarity and insight if I don't have that freedom of space. Right. So when you say you're, you're able to find that clarity, what you're talking about is because I understand my boundaries, I'm staying neutral, my intuition and my maybe even psychic skills, whatever that is, understands or can get clarity on what's happening with that other individual. Or let's even take that word I just said a bit ago, compassionate witness. I am witnessing through compassion that this friend or family member is really struggling. Okay. Therefore, the way he or she is reacting or articulating maybe is really unacceptable and I can just let it go. Yeah. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. That's really, it's compassionate. Man. Compassionate witnessing is a really hard thing to do if you're not neutral. You have to be neutral to compassionately witness and find clarity and observation because I can't have that if I'm not just at zero uh, because I'm putting in my own egoic perspective spin, mm-hmm. you know, um, uh, everything. It, it, it's it's just, it's not real. Well, yeah, right. what is real? <laughs> <I don't think. laughs> yeah. So I think that this is a skill set that I, probably would love to see taught in grade school as a lot of energetic things. Well, think about um, children at a yes. young age and the bullying and the insecurities and all of the things. It's conflict resolution. Told, believe, yeah. yeah, all of it. And yeah. to be able to be neutral and be like, whatever. Yep. Yeah, you know, and again, it's not whatever. No. It's not that. It's, it's whatever. That. It's it really is Whatever, this. that's your yeah. thing. It's not yeah. mine. You know? And it's really important for us to know that when we have neutrality and observer mode, we do find conflict resolution because we respect mm-hmm. different opinions. I mean, I don't have to agree with your opinion, but I can certainly respect it. Right. Yeah, I think a, an amazing challenge going into the holidays, because this will air before the holidays, some of the holidays anyway, um, is to really, especially getting together with family and friends for all the parties and gatherings and everything, is to really start to feel those triggers. And, and start to, I mean, it's to be able to, um, to, you know, really write them down and figure out and start to heal those things that, um, so the challenge to stay neutral, like, oh my God, why am I doing that? Okay. How do I stay neutral? Mm -hmm. Like let's step, step back. And Mm -hmm. while I have compassion and I'm open and I'm watching and all of the things observing, um, remember this trigger because I need to figure out how to release that and put it back into the Akashic records. And remember, this is not about not having emotions. This is about having emotions, but perceived as not having emotions. So when you're doing all that work that you just rattled off there and getting it to the Akash, blah, blah, that's what we want in the Akash is the emotion. We want the feel. We want the actual feel center of what it is that we are dealing with, because this is the hard part, the the neutrality of it all. So the observer, the neutral takes information without the judgment, but mm-hmm. we still want to take the feel through and then send that out. Do you, yes. do you see that's really two different things? Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. Because so. the feel creates the thought. The thought starts the whole gerbil mind, all of the things. So the feel and the thought together, you're you're creating that that whole timeline or that you're co-creating what, yep. what it is. When you're moving things through your container to keep it more clear and clean to observe more. It's yes. the process, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's a choice of how you want to, you know, go after it actually. And let's think of it just as energy because basically that's all that is. So if it I'm is. taking on negativity and energy, I feel thick and I feel heavy. And I, you know, I was body scanning just last night and I'm like, oh my God, that's really stuck right there. What is that? And then you go in and you find what it is. Cause I can see it psychically and I can feel it in my body. But when you go in, you want to go into that feel like, oh, mm -hmm. that's sadness or, oh, that's fear or whatever. So, you know, it's really important to go into it and then identify it, feel it, and then send it through so that your body is more open to observing more and more and more, you know, observing is a hard skill because we're not really trained to really observe. We yeah. kind of observe. Right. And it's so funny, you know, oftentimes I always think if I was that person that the police said, well, what just happened? There's a great movie, and I don't remember what it was called, where something horrific happens and they take it from everybody else's standpoints and nobody has the same story at all because nobody sees the same thing, right? Yeah, right. You know, right, it because was you're, really you're what you're bringing to the table with your experiences and your feelings and thoughts is totally different than what you would bring to the table. Right. But yeah. we can actually expand the skill set to be able to go oh well I did see a man but when we get better at observer as a whole lifestyle we'll go oh I saw the man he was approximately this tall he had this color hair he did have on a blue jacket and the blue jacket did have an emblem right here because our brain is taking in the information that it's like oh I'm not just seeing the woods I oftentimes do this on the way home from up north oh look at how many different greens there are there are so many different greens on the way home. Or yeah. do you just see green? You know, yeah. is it is it a you know is a vibrant green? Is it a dull green? Is that a gray green? Is that a yellow green? What is that? You know, so ex inspecting things for hue, for variance, for shades, for movement, for all of that stuff is training, so that we know how to capture the moments in our brain process. Mm -hmm. So then we are cultivating what we would again consider mindfulness or being present. Because if I'm doing it right now, just as a practice, my brain is going to start automatically doing that. But if I walk through my day like a zombie and never even think two shakes about it, I'm missing all of that. And again, this is information that you're putting into your supercomputer that then you have the ability to pull content from, right? Mm -hmm. And when I have more content, it always gives me more wisdom and knowledge. So this is a, it's a really great practice. So that practice, does it expand your brain usage? You know what I mean? Like, are you using more of your brain? I, I would think I, I would think that it's doing a lot more storage, a lot more firing and a lot more connection. And my goal when I do it is to not only connect my brain, but connect my brain to my heart and my feel centers so mm -hmm. that I'm talking throughout the chakra system and not just in one spot. So, and this makes such a difference in how you approach life. For example, you know, you're, you're looking at, oh, it's really crappy weather out here. It's kind of gloomy. Or are you looking at, God, this is a really interesting day. It feels almost like grayish with some mist and, oh my gosh, it feels almost ominous. And, you know, you can, you can decide what your reality is going to play out like by being so intricate within all of that expression or God, it sucks outside. It's cold. Right. <laughs> Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. Well, that's kind of how I was earlier. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you get to do whatever you want, but I mean, my point is we become, when we become aware of every subtle thing, yeah. because we're training ourselves to it, we feel the sensations and then we take responsibility in our body. But most of us don't do that because right. we are so disconnected from our body. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're creatures of habit. We're just on autopilot. We just walk around like it's no big deal. Mm -hmm. I'm driving, especially. Oh I, my God. I, I don't even I think know about that when I'm somewhere. driving. I'm like, I wonder if they're on autopilot. I hope they're paying attention to what's happening right now because there's a big truck coming. You know, it's right? Like, oh my God. Right. Yeah. It's serious. And and it's it's funny that you said, you know, like when you're driving home from the cabin or whatever, I constantly look for new, new things that I've never seen before. Yeah. It's especially, amazing to me yeah. how many things I never noticed before. 
right on the way home yeah especially as the seasons change which i think is the leaves go away right like like there's like oh wow i didn't even know there were houses back there yeah and it's so (laughs) staying present in that moment of oh awe and wonder too and i think that's what's so cool about the world that brings back awe and wonder just differently than oh christ i got three hours to get home you know that it's a whole different world so Mm -hmm. but i think in the big context of the craziness right now once we engage in a response, once we put an emotion to a thought, we've already paved an energetic pathway. And this is so important for us to understand as humans when we're in this manipulation right now. Once we engage in a response by triggering an old thought and a reaction and an emotion and a movement and much less an action, it the opportunity of neutral is already gone. Mm-hmm. It just is gone because we've already created it for that moment in time. Right. So it's not too late though. It's not too late. If you do the flip side of the work in yes. terms of, okay, I just got sucked into that. Now I'm consciously, consciously going to sit here and purposely put into the collective matrix, what I do want to see. And mm-hmm. then that's a different kind of work, but it is the opportunity to almost make up for missing the opportunity of being neutral. Yeah, because you mentioned before, when you already go into it and you've already sucked in, you're consenting to what that that um, message is or what that visual or you know is. But if you are flipping it, do you also say, "I do not consent"? Um, I usually do, especially when it's something like war or the crap I'm seeing on TV, or if I know that I'm feeling programming. Okay. So, and this is not think. This is not. It's egoic parts of ourselves, but not fully egoic because the ego, the true ego that's out of whack is doing judgment, criticism, blah, blah. What we want to do is we want to stay neutral in no judgment, no criticism, no anything. We we don't want to be comparing and judging. We just want to stay neutral. And mm-hmm. so it's, it's a great mm, mindful practice skill exercise for, for really deleting, deleting, deleting as much judgment as we can. So I find myself where I do the work is like, oftentimes I'll say I'm in Walmart and the kid's screaming next to me and I'm like, oh my God, shut your kid up. I can't even stand it, you know, immediate reaction. And then it's, that's the time when I go, you have some work to do. And I do it at that very second. And I do do it at that very second. I do it in my car too. Uh, Road rage, scream. I will just have unbelievable verbal vomit come out of my mouth. That's the second that I stop. And say, okay, now here's your compassionate witness opportunity. Maybe this person is going off to the hospital because their grandma's dying. You know, I mean, come on, you know, so this is, we don't want to compare ourselves to other with this elitist. I'm so great. And you're an idiot. You know, we want to just step back and, and observe once again, going, wow, that just cut me off. It doesn't mean the person's an asshole. It means that I just got cut off. So just Mm -hmm. stop what comes out. So reactionary Mm -hmm. and just because you miss the observer moment doesn't mean you can't go back and reprogram. Right. I just did that yesterday. I had a, I had somebody do a really silly thing on the road and, and it came out of my mouth and I sat back. I'm like, Oh, okay. That's, that's, uh, let's take a step back. Yeah. And I talk a lot. I'm like, wow, Suzanne. Wow. I I do. I do the same thing in the car (laughs) by myself. Oh my God. That's funny. But I mean, notice what you like, what did your body do? For example, well, the reaction right away, it feels like so aggressive, you know, yeah. like it's like, oh, like how, how did I react that quickly? And then taking that step back, the calmness, yeah. you know, and, and putting out there, you know, kind of the, the good vision of what that, this is what I'd like to see. And I have compassion for that person. And, right. um, but it's, it's, it's taken a long time for me to get to that place to even want to do that, you know, and I, I, because it's, it's a practicing it it starts to come more automatic. Now I catch yeah. myself more um, frequently and eas- easily and can really take that step back. That's why the relationship with self is so important because if you literally are identifying what you're doing, what you're feeling, what you're thinking versus what just verbally vomited out of your mouth, you know, you do come back to this leads to the moment where you can choose to change habits. Right. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. if we don't do that work, the habit is just a habit. We're on autopilot. So okay. The present moment is the only time that we have, and we never realize that. Right, right. And habits are so, I'm, I'm just amazing how I'm ingrained they are. They're such yeah, old without thinking, you know. 
yep. It's such old energy. It's just, yeah. So one of the things that I watch is my breath. Um, I, I get tight. I, I fear it's like fight or flight. Those are usually the trigger reactions in my body. So again, I've been playing with close your eyes, close your eyes, close your eyes, because is this real? Is this real? Even if I'm having the family situation where, you know, we're doing all this work up here and I have the old trigger and I still get pissed about something. It's like, stop, just close your eyes, take a breath, just take a moment, you know? And oftentimes, by the way, I'll leave the room. I will walk out of the room. And we all know if you follow the work that I do, I oftentimes they get to, they get to, they get to, she gets to, he gets to, they get to. And then what do I get to do with this? What do I get to do with this? You know? So it, it, yeah, it's, and this, by the way, I want to end on the thought of this is not easy stuff. When you become an observer and when you become more of a witness and when you're becoming the watcher of your life, people can confuse this so much. And it's important for you to want to defend what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And that takes you right out of the observer. <laughs> it does. It does. Right? But sometimes I think when that triggers happening and you defend what you're doing, you still move past that reaction and realize you have that trigger, which is part of going back to heal or release that trigger. Right. Yeah. Um, but it's once you get out of it, you're out. I mean, there's no going back once you react like that. I, I think, I think the trigger thing is so hard because the trigger is always goes deeper and we just think that it's the trigger, but it's really the belief. And yes, so, it takes you into why did I react that way to yeah. what so there's is that, that I'm holding? Deeper work that's to be done if we're finding the triggers. So yes. yeah. yeah, but when you're breaking old patterns, remember we mirror each other and our friends and family and loved ones will start to get anxious around us when we don't react how we used to or we don't react how they do. Yeah. And it gets, um, I find this in my immediate family sometimes that, you know, I'll get the smart ass comment of, oh, aren't you, you know, on your high horse or whatever, because you're not reacting. I mean, that makes me on a high horse, <laughs> you know, they'll twist it because actually that person's on the high horse with judgment. Do you see? Yeah. So it will be very difficult in these family gatherings. Like you said, if you have those old kinds of mirroring, um, kind of like reactions with siblings and our family, loved ones or friends or partners um, or parents. These are the things that we want to watch one more time with that compassionate yeah. witness. It's like, oh my God, they just mirrored me, you know? And Absolutely. again, neutral, neutral, neutral. So, and neutral, by the way, I, I really want to end with, this is conflict resolution. You de-escalate a fight when you stay neutral. Mm -hmm. Fine. Great. Whatever. Fine. Great. Whatever. You know, there's no fight. There's no fight. Hey. Wouldn't it be nice if our governments could figure that out? <laughs> well, and, you know, because no I, I, I visually put out there all the time, you know, for people to release and let go of the anger, because there really is no reason to treat anyone other than with kindness, you know? Yeah. So working on it on myself, putting that visual out there, you know, I, I hope that eventually people will come around. Yeah. I can't hard. fix them. Not so I'm not trying to fix them. I'm just putting a better visual out there for what I would like it to be. Yeah, build the collective out. <laughs> cool. All right. So is that pretty much nail everything that I think we covered it really about? well, actually. Yeah. It's a good one. I think especially it's going into the holidays. I was just gonna say it's a good one for the holidays, especially when you're standing in the store looking at the clerk who isn't moving fast enough and there's 25 people in front of you and you gotta go somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be everywhere, right? Yeah. Absolutely. It's so, yeah, it, it's fun. It'll be great. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. And as always, everyone, um, take what resonates, toss what doesn't, hit the subscribe, uh, like, share buttons. We appreciate any comments. We love uh, being here for you. And uh, if you have any, I don't know, suggestions on anything further, please put it in the box below and we can get back to you individually or collectively. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. We like to hear. Let's hear All some right. more. Cool. All right. Until next, on behalf of us both, thank you very much and cosmic hugs. <laughs> Bye.